Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, and we're going to be doing a dental implant surgery in this 4-6 site in this video, and just an overview about what we'll be getting into. We'll anesthetize, punch, flap, uh, osteotomy, profile, place the implant, and then close up. Here's where we ended up at the end of the surgery, uh, and there's a PA. So here's the case. Uh, three months prior, the patient presented for an exam with pain, lower right, painful to bite on. Huge decay under the crown, uh, decided that the tooth was not savable, so we made a plan to extract and then place a implant three months after the extraction. So we did that, we took a panoramic, we can see that the inferior alveolar nerve is, is way, way down below in the jaw, so there's plenty of bone to work with, lots of width as well, so simple freehand surgery. Um, there's the post-op PA, so we'll get into the um, footage here, and I'm going to be including most of the raw footage um, and then just fast-forwarding through the boring stuff. So we'll get started um, with a cartridge of 1 in 200 articane into the mandibular nerve. You can see that there's a history of periodontal disease, but been well controlled. He actually went to a periodontist to get it under control, and it's been stable for some time with no mobility in any of the teeth. So we'll get our cartridge into the... Um, mandibular nerve and then infiltrate buccally with the 1 in 200 articane and then quick rinse uh, just looking around the mouth you can see there's no outstanding issues gums are nice pink and healthy so we'll get started with the procedure sometimes we'll take a probe and just kind of poke right in the middle of the arch where we want the uh, implant to be coming out of to guide our tissue punch and I like to do a tissue punch and then a flap. So we'll uh, we'll get put a little mark with our explorer until we see can see it clearly, and then we'll take the tissue punch, put it right over top of the mark, and then um, press down pretty pretty firmly to sever the uh, periosteum so we can scoop out our tissue punch, and that'll give us space for the healing abutment to poke out of. Once we're finished, I'm gonna take a curette and remove it. This tooth was just extracted about three months ago, so there's going to be quite a bit of soft tissue coming out with the um, punch as well as underneath. It's kind of like a soft osteoid-like bone. So we'll lay a uh, papillus-bearing flap mesially and distally, and then we'll peel it back. I'm going to fast forward a little here. And you can see that there's plenty of bone horizontally and vertically as well from the x-ray, so going to be fairly straightforward. There's a little buccal exostosis there that I'm actually just going to whack off with the tissue profiler just to make a nice uniform site for healing. And then we'll get started with the osteotomy. So I like to take a round burr first and use that to I'm just going to feather that site there and then just punch a hole right in the middle where we put our tissue punch and i'll usually take that down six millimeters or so and you can see the bone is pretty soft and osteoid like kind of like a combination with some soft tissue and bone but that'll all get opened up as we do our osteotomy so we'll take the round burr in with kind of best guess freehand measurements and then we'll get started with our Versa burrs. And all that soft tissue is gonna get augered out as we open up the osteotomy. We plan to place a 4.8 millimeter diameter by 12 millimeter length tissue level implant. And I get my implants from Blue Sky Bio. They're Stroman compatible. So we'll keep opening up the osteotomy Oh, we got a uh, got a little pilot PA there um, with a bit of a cone cut, but enough information to tell us that we're on the right track. So we'll keep opening up. Just gonna fast forward here, and everything's on clockwise motion. Gonna grab a four point three millimeter drill as our second to last and for these ones i'll usually just give it a little bit of a swish with um irrigant before putting it into the osteotomy 
just to wet the surface of the drill. And we'll take this one to length. Since we're going to be placing a 12 millimeter length implant, we'll take the osteotomy down to 13 or 14 millimeters. And once that one's done, I'll do a little bit of profiling just so we have better length measurement to make the cuff of the osteotomy nice and uniform. And then we'll grab our four point, it'll be a 4.5 millimeter. And then we'll take that down to 13 millimeters or so. And that'll be it for the osteotomy. We'll be ready to place the implant now. But before we do that, I think we're just going to clear out some of the soft tissue from around the rim with a round. And then a curette. And then before placing the implant, I usually like to give a really good thorough rinse with the uh, saline on full power. And then we'll grab our implant and begin placing it with the handpiece. And I'll usually put it up to 50 or 60 Newton centimeters max torque. And we'll take the polished collar all the way down to the bone. And then we'll grab a ISQ peg, Austel beacon. And we'll get a couple ISQ measurements, 80 buccolingual and another 80 mesiodistal. So very happy with the stability. We'll take off the smart peg and then put the healing cap on. One more rinse with saline before placing the healing cap. And then we'll close up. You'd have the option of suturing or using a tissue adhesive. Um, one more rinse here. If, uh, if it's a small enough site, I'll typically just use a tissue adhesive. So I'll apply some uh, manual pressure for about a minute or so to control the bleeding because the adhesive likes a nice dry site. And then we'll just apply the adhesive. This is a product called Glue Stitch Fast Set Periacral. And it works good for little stuff. And that's pretty much it. We'll give post-op instructions. I'll usually give 1,000 milligrams of Tylenol, 600 milligrams of Advil, and 2 grams of amoxicillin preoperatively, and then a rinse with hydrogen peroxide. Finish the surgery, send them home with a bottle of chlorhexidine or hydrogen peroxide, and we'll have them back in two or three months to put the crown on.